whoa, check it out. He's actually streaming again. I thought for certain he was going to get into videos. Whatever the heck happened to that? What is up, everybody? This is Jay, a.k.a. Multimedia Jay, coming at you in my uh, usual turf as a night shift guy, the middle of the night. If I'm going to be doing any streaming, it's probably going to be, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, <laughs> you can see Tuxedo in the background over in the project area. I am working on a video. I just need to film a new intro for it. That's the last thing to really finish for the next tech video to start things off. Although the tech videos are just going to be one thing that I do on this channel. There's this talk about the multimedia meta and all this other stuff is also going to be something that I uh, also do as well on this channel to keep things very multimedia specific, whatever that means these days. So there's a couple of things going on that we have to talk about, and it's one of the big reasons why I'm here tonight. First order of business, though, we have some new subscribers to say some nice things to here. So... Lilium, thank you for the sub on YouTube. And JTD, thank you for the sub. I gotta fix those, some of those, uh, yeah, some of those borders aren't as blue screened as they should be, but we'll play with that some other time. So, anyways, we've got some new, we got some new subs for the YouTube channel, assuming they're not like spam accounts or anything like that. <laughs> so, title of the stream is... Your audience reflects your attitude. And I referenced an old saying people have that sometimes people start to look like their pets. Like someone, for example, they'll have a certain hairstyle and they'll get a dog that kind of looks similar to them or something like that. You know, but in the world of content creation and online media, what happens is your audience starts to reflect on you. And this is really one of the biggest issues that content creators face is just the simple fact that you can't control everything when, when it comes to all of this. One of those things you can't control is what people do with what it is that you're doing. So, I mean, you can do demographics work to, oh, I didn't even have a thumbnail attached to this. We'll fix that shortly. YouTube has a bit of a problem on the streaming side with Teflon settings. So depending on what your last stream was, and thumbnails in particular are really tough to, uh, let's just put the uh, multimedia J thing in here and just make sure it saves, doesn't get blown away in two seconds. It's no fun having the generic camera icon there. <laughs> uh, let's actually go check the channel for this. Do da do da do da do da da YouTube.com slash multimedia J. And it is being reflected properly. Good stuff. Good stuff. So we got to talk about something that's been going on on Twitter. Now, those of you who've been following what I what I talk about on Twitter know I do way more stuff with the multimedia meta on Twitter because I'm responding to what a lot of the commentators out there are talking about. There's a thing that Ashney Christ was passing around, and it's from another streamer. I went and checked his Sully Gnome numbers. It's another one of those small streamers that's really angry. So I talk about angry Twitch affiliates, but this time it is somebody who's actually a Twitch partner, just one of those little bitty Twitch partners who's basically affiliate plus plus two digit concurrence. I mean, I've seen Twitch affiliates get up to three digit concurrence before they get partnered. So it's yet another one of those situations where even if you're, I mean, if you're playing a character, it's one thing, but if you have a persona, that means some elements of your personality are getting involved, are showing up in what it is that you do and what it is that you do reflects on you. At the very same time, the audience that you attract is going to reflect on your attitude. So why don't we get to the tweets here and move a few things around on these various windows here. And let's talk about this. So this is somebody who is talking about what otherwise would be a very serious issue here. The idea of being real on stream, not, you know, pretending, you know, not having a plastic smile on your face to smile for the cameras. It's actually something that is really serious. Let's fire up some of the uh, stream beats music as well and get some of that going and just get the get the mix correct. Just make sure that it is correct because we actually have another. Well, actually, no, before we even do anything with the music there, I have the Bluetooth speaker here. This old, uh, this old, the Boston speaker, as some of you might have seen in my YouTube videos a couple of years ago. One of the fun things about this Bluetooth speaker is that it sounds like a telephone when you use it as a microphone. So I actually have something set up to actually switch everything over. <laughs> Cold ones at the ready, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So here's the thing. 
There is nothing wrong with expressing yourself in your stream, but you have to realize that the demographics you attract are going to be tied into the way that you portray yourself and the way you conduct yourself. You're still talking about developing social skills and building relationships with people, even though there's legions of commentators out there that say you're building a brand instead. I really wish some of these people who blabber on about building a brand would actually learn what it, what's actually involved in building a brand, learn some marketing, and learn why people like myself take this as seriously as we do. Because as we're seeing with Robinhood right now, brands can suffer damage, sometimes irreparable damage. So uh, it could be the case that the reputation of Robinhood, the app, based on what happened with all the stonk stuff last week, is irreparably damaged to the point where the app needs to be renamed. And in the world of business, you're talking about things like registering new trademarks, all kinds of paperwork and things like that. So it's a very serious issue whenever brands suffer damage. And so the idea that you're building a brand and that you, the way you're conducting yourself in your videos and streams is on par with that is just out of control ego. You need to understand what's in, why that is such a serious thing in the business world and stop trying to commandeer these terms for yourself to make yourself look bigger than you actually are. So what all this is based on tonight's discussion is this whole idea of whether or not you can be real on stream and the idea of expressing yourself there's something to be said for expressing yourself properly. Number one, showmanship. If you want to put on a good show, if you want to, for example, have something like what I do that sounds like a good radio show, something people are not only going to want to listen to live, but also, you know, check it back after the fact. Maybe not everybody's up half the night or something like that to catch these live, so they'll check out the replay afterwards when I get it done and set it up on YouTube. So... You can, you know, showmanship is an act of respect to your audience because that means your audience matters enough for you to put in the effort to try and make something better for them. So you don't want like a stagnant production or something where that doesn't matter. And of course, expressing yourself properly is very important to doing this because if you don't express yourself, if you try to keep things bottled up in boilerplate, what you basically end up with is one of those boring conference calls that you see in corporate America. <laughs> and the reason why I have my Bluetooth speaker here, <laughs> just going to leave it on the table and we're just going to watch the levels and make sure it's correct. <sighs> if you don't express yourself, you end up with a boring conference call and it may kind of be kind of like this. Welcome, everybody, to the quarterly review. I'm just going to move the microphone here. Today, we're going to be talking about these KPIs that we have and how we can get the KPIs up by 3% next quarter. Hey, um, somebody who's banging their desk, can you please put your microphone on mute? <laughs> okay, I'm glad that's all sorted out now. So where are we going from here? We need to have a conversation about the direction everything's going in, and we need to do this. And with the, 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 the <laughs> I can't keep up. I can't keep a straight face trying to do that. Switch back to the main mic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, both, both mics, mics at, at once. once. Woo! What, what does, does that, that sound, sound like? like? I'm gonna have to, to wait until hear the replay, replay to see what that, that sounds, sounds like. like. <sighs> Telephone, Telephone sounding mic, mic is now off. <laughs> But if you've ever been on one of those conference calls that people often nod off to at their desk, and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about, that is the world of boilerplate, uh, boilerplate expressionless bleh, that has no place in an entertainment platform like Twitch and YouTube. Let's fire up some uh, synth wave here. <laughs> Come on, drive, spin up. You can do it. All right. Levels looking good? All right. So let's take a look at this thing on Twitter since um, I responded to it. So what's in play here is this idea that your attitude is eventually reflected in your audience as a content creator. So let's read some of this verbatim to get the context correct. Can we please normalize showing negative emotions on street? There, that thing's out of the way. Keyboard is kind of in the way there. Can we please normalize showing negative emotions on stream? 
Anytime I get slightly frustrated about something, I feel like since I'm on stream, I'm not allowed to show it at all because everyone's been conditioned to expect all streamers to be positive and happy. Where? I've certainly seen streamers get upset at like losing a match in like Valorant or something. So I just have to bottle it up. Bad idea. And if something actually makes me mad, then it just gets worse because I can't process through the through the anger, so it just festers. Then I start getting anxious because I wonder if people think everything's awkward and the stream now sucks. Can we start saying it's okay to be mad on stream and just ride through the emotions and be back to normal in two minutes? It's unhealthy. It's unfair to expect someone to never show any negative emotion just because they're in front of a camera. I don't know where this, this guy gets this idea from. Where, where exactly did this come from? Where, whoever, since when do streamers have to have plastic smiles on their faces everywhere they go? Where, where'd this idea come from? Someone explain, please? I don't know. Now, there's all this talk about building a community. When, when the people, when the talking heads aren't talking about building a brand, they flip the other way, whether they know it or not, and say building a community. Okay, if you're trying to develop relationships with others, how do you intend on doing that if you're this boilerplate, boring person that's not expressing themselves? So in response, and what I responded to was Ash putting this in here. Fresh perspective for streamers, covering up your emotions on stream is more detrimental to your audience and you than being honest. People need to know they aren't weird for struggling and you deserve to process your feelings in a healthy way. Healthy choices make you sustainable. To which I said this, getting upset is one thing, but if you're constantly derailing your content with your personal problems, you'll attract an audience of toxic schadenfreuders who just want to see you complain all the time. Your audience inevitably reflects your attitude. And I expanded on that with some tweets following up afterwards. Schadenfreuders? Yeah, that's a reference to Schadenfreude. One of the one of the foundational behaviors of things like sadism and whatnot. It's the idea that you derive pleasure from someone else's misfortune. Schadenfreuders? Yes, they're a thing on the internet. People who derive pleasure from other people's problems. Friends and support groups exist to help people. Never entrust your problems to randos on the internet. It's true. I go check his Sully Gnome two-digit concurrence. It's always the angry folks, you know. It's always the angry folks that, that are doing this kind of stuff. Same thing, too, with some of the arguments on Twitter. I check their numbers. They're always small. You know why? The biggest, most successful creators are also the most focused. This is something, this is something that I believe I've mentioned before already. You call yourself a content creator, that means you create stuff. Now, how do you intend on creating stuff if you're Captain Firefighter, so to speak? No disrespect to firefighters, by the way, but figuratively here. You're constantly putting out fires, so to speak. You're constantly dealing with issues. You're constantly getting involved in drama. How do you plan on being a content creator who makes lots of good stuff if that's what's going on? If that's what you're, you know, if, how do you plan on doing this? How do you plan on doing this if you're constantly getting sidetracked? And that's the thing. You look at some of the biggest creators out there, whether on Twitch or on YouTube, you'll find that they're the most focused. They're not getting derailed by every little thing that comes along. So this whole idea of being hyper emotional on stream, it's part of the show to be yourself, so to speak, if you think your personality is going to drive what it is that you're doing. But you will, if you are constantly derailing your channel to complain about stuff, you will, it's not if, but when, start attracting people who are there specifically for that. This is something I am intimately familiar with because I've screwed this up before as well in my 15 years on YouTube. There have been, I've sharpened the figurative axe, so to speak, and chopped out a bunch of videos from my channel that basically consisted of either me complaining about stuff or the whole purpose of the video was to respond to something someone said on the internet, and it doesn't really have any staying power other than that. There's a couple more videos I got to get rid of. But the problem you run into is demographics is an ongoing thing. It's, it's, it's interesting. 
You got all these people that want to, they would, there would be marketers going around talking about building brands and blah, blah, blah. But they don't talk about demographics, which is more important than any of that. You'll talk about targeting, you know, people will talk about, for example, targeting your content to a certain group of people. That's demographics. That's you answering that question. Who do you want to attract? Who do you want to repulse? And if you don't answer those questions and leave it up to chance, what you get might not be what you like. And then you have to figure out what to do about it afterwards. So you are right back to where you should have been in the first place in deciding, do I want these people sticking around or how can I repulse those people? Because I don't want them in my, I don't want them in my fan base or in my audience. Or I don't want them watching. Da, da, da. I want to cater to this group and not that group. These are all questions you might as well answer up front, because if you don't, you're going to have to answer them anyways. And instead of just ha doing the right thing from the beginning, now you have to fix stuff that went wrong. It's so, you know, you get knocked back and then you just have to you, you, have, you have to do everything anyway. So you might as well just do it up front. I'll tell you what my channel, who my channel's for. 21 plus. I don't want teenagers watching. They can if they're mature enough to handle the content. But the rule of thumb is if anything on this channel can get you in trouble with your parents, you're too young. So, I mean, I don't. I'm pretty close to middle age, you know, 30s. I don't need to be trying to relate to people that are like 17, 18 years old. I didn't even like immature juvenile humor when I was that age. You know, there's a couple of dumb things I laughed at when I was 12 or 13 or whatever. But I can tell you that by high school, I was probably, you could have easily thought I was older than I actually was. I just wasn't really caught up in what was popular when I was a teenager. Same thing in college. Didn't want to get caught up in the drinking scene. So I've made the conscious decision that there's certain types of there's certain types of people and behaviors that I don't want on my channel. And these people, if they don't leave on their own, will be easily banned. One of those behaviors is Schadenfreude. If you derive pleasure from other people's misfortune, my channel is not for you. That's why I brought this up very specifically with regards to this issue. Now, the way to attract people who are like that is to be persistently complaining about stuff and persistently not leaving your personal problems, uh, you know, when you, off to the side when you go live or when you make a video. If your channel is constantly getting derailed, eventually you start attracting the people who want to see you complaining all the time. And those are going to be people that you don't get along with. If you are attracting people who want to see you complaining all the time, let me actually, I'm going to my community settings here. If you are attracting people, if you are attracting people who don't have your best interests in mind, who don't have your best interest in mind, who are doing this, they're not going to have your best interests in mind. These are people who want to see you complain. And they, they don't really care about what it is that you do. They don't care about any any of your content. All they want to do is just see you complain. I'm looking through some some set some settings here. Yeah, close. Never banned the guy. He left on his own. Okay, because I've I've run into people like this. So you complain too much, and you attract you attract toxic Schadenfreuders, as I call them, people that derive entertainment value from your problems and what happens to these people is they start becoming a problem in your audience good people who will be supportive of you are going to clash with these people until they leave you know and it doesn't necessarily have to be open conflict it could be the case that somebody is mouthing off in your comments someone's mouthing off in your comments and other people don't like that now I talk a lot about low hanging fruit. There are some people that voice their thoughts and they will actually come out and they will say, this is why I'm not watching you anymore. I'm leaving, da da da. But those people are the low hanging fruit. Those are the easy ones. For every one of them, who knows how many people you have in your audience that don't like somebody and just leave because they just don't want to deal with that person anymore. It has nothing to do with you. Just they don't they don't jive with this person that's constantly being toxic in your chat, constantly being toxic in your comments, talk uh, constantly being toxic everywhere. And so they don't want to deal with it and they don't like you enough 
to stick around or to speak up about it or to do anything. That's the that's the issue you always got to be concerned about. The people who will not tell you why they're not watching, why they're not sticking around, why they're you know why they left. Or how about the people that won't tell you the real reason why they left? They'll give you a pretext or something because they don't want to offend you. Oh, I got another job and I'm working a different shift, so I don't have time, blah, blah, blah. When in reality, they just didn't like somebody in your chat or your comments. Yeah. When the schadenfreude, if you have schadenfreuders in your audience, you're not banning enough people. Because ask yourself this, if you want to build something, you want to build a fan base, how are you going to do that with people who only care about you when things are going wrong? They don't support you or they vanish or whatever when things are going right. Or they say you have an ego problem if you're ever proud of something you did. You know, because they always want to they always want to see you down. They always want to see you complaining. They always want to see you not getting anywhere. Because that's what that's what they derive enjoyment from is your misfortune. Yeah, that's that's a horrible way to treat people. Let me see some of the response to what Ash said about this. Thanks for echoing, da-da-da. Sea of Thieves, da-da-da. So she's talking about showing emotions, but don't forget, your emotions reflect on you. If you're overly emotional and people think that they they're that they can't watch you without being nervous about getting banned over the tiniest little thing, they're going to watch someone else who isn't like that. Again, market forces in general. We'll see how many other people have quoted besides me here. Because they, these are the people that are, they don't confront directly, but they ponder the ideas on their own, myself included. The biggest issue with Ashney and where we're going to go our separate ways is her background is Twitch, 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 to the point where she's trying to build a business off of essentially coaching Twitch streamers. And I think that's too narrow of a focus, way too narrow of a focus. And the problem is she's over her head in all of this narrative that Twitch people talk about where you commandeer YouTube to support your Twitch channel. And that's no way to treat this platform. Not having, not with it having been around for over 15 years now, having become the premier video platform in the world and having a darn good streaming setup, if I do say so myself. To the point where I'd say, it's probably better to kick the tires on streaming on YouTube than it is on Twitch. Only go to Twitch if you find something that you know is going to work over there. Because it's it's easy to knock yourself down a peg when you're trying to get Twitch affiliate and stuff like that. Because nobody's watching you. And the technology is inferior in terms of introducing you to an audience anyway. So, Healthy people have no problem with it from the start and Twitch is a real melting pot for that. Well, here's the thing. I wonder if some of Twitch's more aggressive policies, like their new harassment policy and some of the, and their inconsistent discipline and stuff is actually attracting bad people who want to be immature and troll because they know that's the kind of environment for it. And I'm actually curious if there's anybody who's ever been suspended from Twitch because of stuff they say in chat only, or is it always streamers? Because that's where YouTube used to be. YouTube used to have a problem where people would just be toxic in the comments all the time because nothing ever happened to people who were being toxic in the comments. But now there's this whole thing about where the community guidelines apply to th things you post in the comments as well. It's not just about what you what you do in your videos. So you can't be like toxic in the comments, then make constructive videos and not run afoul of the community guidelines. So I don't really feel like digging through a lot of Twitch policy right now. But yeah, mostly these are people that agree and stuff like that. But I don't know if we're even barking up the right tree to begin with with this kind of stuff. As opposed to talking about demographics. Who do you want to attract? Who do you want to repulse? Who do you want watching? And who don't you want watching? And how are you going to bore those people away, drive those people away, repulse those people away, or make them think they've won? Let them leave a nasty comment. I'm leaving. I thought your channel was good. Da 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 da. I'm gone. See ya. I'm sobbed. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let them think they've won while well, you just keep working on content that attracts a different crowd that isn't so antagonistic. <laughs> the world is gray, Jack. <laughs> to quote from Clear and Present Danger. Sometimes life's not as uh, black and white as we'd like it to be. There's definitely plenty of shades of gray out there. Not to be confused with the uh, the 50 thing. <laughs> but yeah, 
Your audience ultimately reflects your attitude. And let's talk about a few examples of that. So here's the thing. If you're constantly derailing what you're doing with your personal problems, you eventually will attract the schadenfreuders who want to see you complain all the time. Because here's the thing. Everybody has problems. And believe it or not, some people's problems are worse than yours. I can come on here and I can complain about, I hate being overweight, I hate being fat, I hate my job, I hate this, I hate that. And little do I realize, somebody's tuning in, they have a crappier job than me, they have more health problems than me, they have things way worse than I do, and I'm over here acting like I'm the victim. Who wants to watch that? And quite frankly, what do you think that makes you look like? If you're constantly making your situation sound worse than what some of the people tuning in are putting up with because they know their life you know yours and they know when you're being just a crybaby on camera if you're a streamer out in california with five thousand concurrent if you're a full-time streamer out in california because i keep seeing these california streamers in particular being the biggest emotional windbags on camera so i don't watch a lot of them follow the accounts see how they do watch their numbers don't actively tune into their streams because the KIRLs over in Korea are a lot more professional and stay focused on making stuff, a.k.a. they are content creators who stay, get this, focused on creating content. I still say, by the way, uh, K uh, anyways, California streamer. In a streamer house, gorgeous lighting. They make so much money off of donos and subs. They don't have to have a job. Da da da. They can stay quarantined and just stream all the time, unless they're an IRL streamer, of course. So they can stay, you know, they, they have privilege there because they get to do some job remotely and work remotely. So they're technically lumped in with all those privileged people who work remotely all the time and don't come in contact with as much people. So, you know, they have less of a risk of getting of getting the virus going around the pandemic. Uh, and they're complaining about somebody who's saying bad things about them in Valorant. That's the sum total of their problems. Ooh. <laughs> Tell that to somebody tuning into your stream that's been laid off for months because they were a non-essential worker. Or how about somebody who... I mean, this is one of the things that people are talking about in Washington. Maybe they made like 50, 60,000 a year in 2019, and now they're being means tested when they've been unemployed since the beginning of 2020. So, yeah, don't assume that you always have it the worst. <laughs> Many times you don't. What was that thing that a life skills teacher in high school used to say? Be careful. Don't flap your mouth too much because you don't know who you're sitting next to. Yeah. So, yeah. I mentioned California streamers, particularly, although it's cool that Pokimane is, has a real YouTube channel now. I think I think when she gets into it, she might get more in. She'll find herself getting more interested in YouTube videos than streaming. Probably back off in some things, too. Streaming seems to be a boom and bust cycle with her that constantly ends in drama. So making videos and having more fun, I think, will be the best thing to ever happen to her. But that's a different discussion. More of a current events thing, because she just launched an alt channel for lifestyle stuff. She should do more with her Pokimane channel, too. But, I mean, she is kind of tied to gaming with that persona, so... Who knows? But, yeah, your audience reflects your attitude. Whoever you attract, whoever you repulse, that determines your audience. And many times, your audience reflects on that. So, let's talk about personal problems here. Your personal problems do not belong on your streams and videos. And why would you entrust your personal problems to random people on the internet anyways? Random strangers, they don't even have to have your best interest in mind. They could be lying to you about actually liking what it is that you do or actually caring about you. What are they going to do? They're just people behind screens. That's what friends are for. Make some friends. Make some close friends. Join a support group. Or even, hey, there's professionals that help people with their problems. If you work for a company, there's an employee helpline. There's there's probably numerous things you can do about your problems besides cry about them on the internet. That's the missing detail here. And one of the things you run into with toxic behavior when you're around enough people over the years, people often do two things, one of two things wrong. Either they will complain literally to everybody else 
except the people that can actually do something about it and then complain about how the problem never gets solved. Or, very similarly, they will shunt the way they should be handling stuff to do something a different way and then wonder why they're not getting the results they're looking for. I, I encounter this a lot with people who really should be getting officials involved instead of taking stuff on the internet. There was a situation on Twitter that I was upset about a couple of days ago, and I wound up preemptively blocking and muting this person. It's one of those two. It's a streamer I'm never going to watch because if you take something really serious, if you take something really serious and you fake that for views instead of going to law enforcement or... You know, in the case of, say, something with mental health, someone who's actually licensed to practice that stuff, it throws a wrench into your credibility. If a situation is really serious and the platforms will tell you this, don't just report it on the platform, call the police. You know, seek help, seek treatment. The internet is not a substitute for professionals who know how to handle these things and deal with them every single day. It's like that one time when, and actually no, let's just one thing at a time here. So the person that was faking the bad situation that should have, the police should have been involved on. The fact that that went on the internet, instead of filing a police report, and getting law enforcement involved, it makes you wonder if it's a publicity move in the first place, so it hurts the credibility if it were something serious. And one of the things I've run into, particularly with gaming, is I've run into people who really should be seeking help from professionals that are instead going onto a Discord or watching someone's YouTube videos or jumping in stream or something like that. And the truth is, the fundamental problem with online media for these kinds of things, and this sort of thing doctors will mention, sort of thing lawyers will mention, is that what's fundamental to a lot of professional services is a relationship between the person providing the, the services and the client. You don't have that with the internet. It's a parasocial relationship. Everything's one way. That's why you'll see disclaimers about this legal discussion is for information purposes only, does not establish an attorney-client relationship because you would need to call someone and, be cons and consult them in order for that to actually be the case. Some random person on the internet talking about legal stuff is not going to have any idea of the specifics of your situation. And as such, they're in a worse situation to deal with whatever your problems are than someone who actually did the who actually was contacted the right way. It's why doctors and lawyers have these disclaimers in a lot of the stuff they talk about. You know, there are professionals who put in the time study and get certified in what it is they're doing. You don't want to shunt that for any reason. Otherwise, what's the point of having people that know that much stuff or spend that much time in school if you're just going to try and wing it with a YouTube video? Even things like car repairs. Knew a guy, spent thousands of dollars on a car which he ultimately thought he could fix up and needed a new head gasket. Did the head gasket repair himself, saved a ton of money or so he thought, the thing kept overheating, eventually got rid of it. You know, he drove clunkers for years till finally he got something decent that hadn't been some tinker project from somebody trying to not go through the proper channels. So, I mean, I've seen this even with cars. It's not just doctors, lawyers, and professional services. So, if you're a content creator, there are far better things to be doing to get your problems addressed than letting that be what your what your channel is all about. And even if you want to call yourself a life coach, like I've seen, for example, victims of narcissism that basically piecemeal together some knowledge of the topic and then create channels based on I'm off for coaching services, blah, blah, blah. But hands down, the best, the best discussions I've seen regarding these sensitive topics are actually from people with formal credentials. They always blow away the life coaches because they've actually put in the effort and the formal the formal study of the topic that is very serious and could lead and could affect how people view themselves and others if you've been a victim of this kind of behavior. So it's very important is absolutely very important 
that you not shunt out professionals who do this stuff every day, put in the time, put in the effort, are formally certified, deal with stuff, and whose qualifications blow away whatever it is that you could do on your own. That's why people go to all the trouble to provide services like that. It's just we live in this world where we got this idea that democracy means that every random opinion on the internet is weighted the same. And so we get this idea, oh, I can bypass this, I can bypass that, no. You know, if you need open heart surgery, you're not going to go to your local chiropractor. So don't let randos on the internet shunt you away from getting the help, treatment, or whatever it is that you need for whatever it is that you're dealing with. And by the same token, don't let that dominate your channel either. Because there's a group of people out there who don't have your best interests in mind. Who, who aren't on your side. No matter how much they sub or they don't know, or maybe they throw money your way or whatever. Because what you provide to them is misery loves company. And ask yourself, if somebody derives pleasure from other people's misfortune, is that the kind of person you want in your audience? And what do you think that person does to the people in your audience that aren't totally like that? They drive them away. And don't forget, nobody owes you an explanation on anything. Folks like me who talk about this stuff, we're the low-hanging fruit. We'll actually get the gears turning. We'll actually get you thinking about why people come and go from podcasts and streams and watching videos on YouTube. But for every one of us, there's plenty of people who just do it without saying anything. You'll never know what you did. You'll never get any feedback from them. And you shouldn't go chasing them for it either, because if they wanted to give it to you, they would have done so. So, all right, your audience reflects on you. We mentioned schadenfreude. People who want to see you complain all the time will start to take over your audience if you do too much complaining. How about some other ways that we can think of where a creator's audience started reflecting on them? One of the earliest examples of someone who couldn't handle the audience they attracted for me was Armeg21. Loved his reviews, thought his Gilligan's Island review was hilarious. His reviews are still on the uh, Armeg archive, I believe, on YouTube. But this guy was inspired by the angry video game nerd. But his anger was a lot more believable than James. Keep in mind, Angry Video Game Nerd is one of the greatest examples of a content creator that I've respected for many years who has stayed focused and not gotten tied up in drama. And the results of his success speak for themselves. I think that what AVGN has built up since starting on YouTube roughly around the same time I did is way more respectable and way more inspiring than the biggest of Twitch streamers who grew in the last couple of years largely because of YouTube's mistakes. Well, before that all happened, you had James making nerd episodes and eventually the nerd movie and merchandise and games and all kinds of other stuff. What he has done with the nerd character is really amazing. But what, what has he done? He stayed focused. Because the time you spend getting caught up in drama on Twitter or the time you spend getting wrapped up in this or wrapped up in that is not time that you're spending making content for your fans. And that fundamentally is one of the problems of being too wound up on stream or in your videos. Just think about it. You have a group of people watching. Suppose you have some regulars that start watching whenever they can. You have some regulars that start watching what it is you're doing. They like you and they like what you're doing. Why would you ignore them to get all tied up in knots over somebody who doesn't like you, isn't going to support you, maybe not even watch all the time. They might be a fly by night like so many people who trolled me in the comments in my videos over the years. Many of them are fly by nights from sock puppet accounts with no videos. Classic YouTube problem. Why do all of the good people in your audience stop mattering because you're chasing the one bad apple? And think about it. These people that like you, these people that watch you, these people that support you, did they have to, did they start out as trolls and have to reform their behavior before they became fans? No. So how is it fair to any of them if you're spending any time at all trying to get trolls to change their behavior? No, the trolls can change on their own if they want to be better people. 
You know, hold them to the same standard as the rest of your audience. They blow their chance with you, ban them. It's done. Because it's not fair to the support of people who watch you and are respectful and have been respectful from the beginning. If they want to change later on, that's cool. That's what ban appeals are for on platforms like Twitch. I personally don't believe in it. I think you should have social skills right from the beginning and you should be respectful from the beginning and not go in, rabble rouse, get banned and be like, sorry. No, you should be more respectful up front. But yeah, it's not fair. Not fair to the good people in your audience. Anyways, our make was one of the first examples of YouTubers who who attracted an audience that he couldn't handle. His anger was a lot more believable than James. James was being satirical. I could actually believe Armic was angry at games like Bomberman Act Zero. Was it part of the act? Yeah, but this guy showed he could definitely be angry, for real. That started attracting people that were, believe it or not, toxic and had anger issues in the comments. Before he shut down the Armic 21 channel, his community tab was nothing but people trolling him persistently, spamming, trolling, spamming, trolling, a total disaster until he shut his channel down. Talk about some other fan bases here. Irate Gamer in his controversial years was a bit snooty and uh, took style cues from AVGN without giving, him, without giving AVGN credit, starts attracting people who want the controversy. If an irate gamer fan showed up, your comments would be a, would be a mess. Silent Rob grew his channel off of contrarianism, attracted people who like that stuff. What kind of people like that stuff? People who, if they show up in your comments, it's not going to be a good time. This is one of the big reasons too with Yugi over on Twitch. Why before she decided to get moderators, I thought it was a good thing that she'd attracted a good audience by being a good person on stream. That didn't stay that way, of course, but for the time before she had moderators, she actually was a wonderful example of someone who did the demographics thing correctly. I just don't think she really knew anything about any of that stuff or that it was something she should focus on at all. But, you know, stuffy rules don't always create order from chaos. You look at some of the biggest streamers on Twitch, they don't even have rules lists on their Twitch pages. Because by the time you're in someone's Twitch chat, you've already agreed to TOS, community guidelines, and all that other fun stuff. So, there are already rules in place by the time you're entering someone's Twitch chat. So to add more is just redundant and it makes you look like maybe you're a little too emotional. So many of the biggest streamers on Twitch don't even have rules lists in their about sections. But let's think of some other streamers too. Let's think of some other folks. Like, let's take XQC, for example. He's got a wild and crazy fan base that's a little unruly. But his character on stream is wild and crazy and a little unruly. See what I mean? There have been times when XQC has complained about his own fan base. You know? He can't host people because of this, can't do this, can't do that. Well, some of it is the way he's portrayed himself on camera. I know that's part of what he does. That's part of his character, so to speak. That he's acting like what our parents were afraid, those of us that we grow up and turn into if we play too many video games. A little off the deep end, plays video games for hours at a time. That kind of thing. But... As you've seen, the community has a little bit of toxicity and it reflects basically uh, based on the way he is on camera. Asmongold, same problem. He's always had some element of toxicity among his community because he's the professional neckbeard. Well, being the professional neckbeard is going to have side effects, such as people that he may be, you know, bad mouthing in his chat or something or banning people because of that. How about Trainwreck TV, Mr. Squad W? He certainly had problems with people misusing his emotes and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people that I watch, their communities often reflect on the way they are. If they're wound up, so is the people that watch them. 
If they're professional, so is the people that watch them. If they're focused, so is the people that watch them. Time and again and again, you look at, you know, if they're a narcissist, narcissists will watch them. And you'll see a lot of narcissism if you challenge them on Twitter. Again and again and again. How you conduct yourself is never in a vacuum. So if you have a problem with your audience, you got to look at yourself first. Ask yourself, what are you doing that's attracting these people? You got to rule yourself out before you can just say, oh yeah, I just got maliciously raided by a bunch of bad people or something like that. You got to rule that out. Uh, let's get back to this, this Twitter thing here. Yeah, your audience inevitably reflects your attitude. If you're constantly exuding your personal problems on your stream, don't be surprised if you have problems with people in your audience who you attracted specifically because of all the negativity that you brought to the table. See what I mean? Oh, but does that mean I should wear a plastic smile and pretend to be happy when I'm not? No, everybody has bad days. It's part of what makes us human. But if it takes over your channel too much or you start giving a bad impression on people who may not know what it is that you're going through, that affects who watches and that, by extension, affects who's in your audience. Drive away all the good people, who are you going to have left? The bad people, they're going to cause problems in chat, problems in your comments, maybe even problems where you can't say anything on social media without bad things happening to whoever you're talking about the mobbing stuff that I was talking about. Now, mobbing is a form of harassment. It's the sort of thing you'll hear about in corporate America with anti-harassment training. Mobbing is the idea of persona non grata in people. It's when coworkers essentially, they'll stonewall someone's idea or they'll be overtly antagonistic to them. In some way, shape, or form, it's just antagonism, antagonism, antagonism as part of the culture among certain groups of people versus somebody else who's being targeted. Now, the online version of that is when you get upset with someone on Twitter or whatnot, and like 20 people are now bothering this person. <laughs> and some people are like, oh my goodness. Some people are like, oh my goodness. <laughs> some people are like, oh my goodness. You know? Yeah. You got people shutting down Twitters and stuff because, you know, you inadvertently brigaded someone. Well, that reflects on your audience, which reflects on you. you now, these people need to realize that is not acceptable. You don't support it. And you'll even go so far as to ban a subscriber or whatnot if they do that kind of stuff. That, I think, is probably one of the biggest problems with this whole building a brand thing I keep, keep seeing people blabbering on about is they don't take into account the idea that your, your image can be crowdsourced by the people watching. So, who watches matters. So now we're back to demographics once again. Who do you want to attract? Who do you want to repulse? Who watches you reflects on you. And you basically build that via the way you handle things. I hope this is more than enough of an explanation for this kind of thing. Didn't even hit the hour mark, but hey, somebody, hopefully somebody finds some use for this somewhere. Yeah, your audience inevitably reflects your attitude. Stay focused, keep it professional, because quite frankly, you're a content creator. You'll be at your best when you're creating content instead of being persistently wrapped up in someone else's drama or even in your own personal problems getting in the way of you doing what it is that you set out to do as a content creator if something is bothering you that's what friends are for close friends professionals people that are in a better position to help than randos on the internet who as far as you're concerned could be lying to you about caring about you in the first place you don't know if these people in your chat really care about you, if you just want to be, you know, chat, I want to talk about this terrible thing that's happening in my life. You don't know who those people are or what they're going to do with the information or, you know, someone's going to clip something and send it to LSF or what have you. 
Now, you don't know. You can know, however, if it's a trusted friend that you bring these issues to or somebody who's in a position to need to handle sensitive situations properly that you bring these issues to. You know, just like in the offline world, who you talk to matters. So don't entrust whatever it is that's got you down to random people on the Internet where you don't even know if they even have your best interests in mind at all. And you have no way of knowing it's the Internet. There's a degree of anonymity. And quite frankly, the world could use a little bit more 1990s style skepticism about the Internet and the way the Internet works, including our tendency to let our guard down too much and build a YouTube channel until it gets derailed by some problem we're having or build a Twitch stream until it gets derailed by some problem we're having when guess what? Those random people watching you, they got problems of their own and there's probably people watching that have worse problems than you do. Think about it. Check your privilege. Use some empathy. Understand where the other guy is coming from. And I hope this gets the gears turning. The sun shall be rising in a few hours. And quite frankly, I'm going to call it early. I got to get up and shovel some snow. Woo! New England. Gotta love it. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by.